One of the biggest sins that a man can do, or a woman, is with the tongue. You know, in the book of James it says the tongue is a world of iniquity. There's a lot of wildfires you can spread with your tongue. There's a lot of things you can say with your tongue that can bring a lot of destruction to not only others, but to yourself. The Bible says, Jesus says, out of abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A lot of times what a person says with their mouth is what they really are or what they really believe in their heart. And if you listen long enough, you really see who or what that person is. And quite often what we find is prideful people love to say things about themselves and brag upon themselves. But according to Enoch and other sources, supposedly, Enoch was so close to God that God took Enoch under his wing and said, Enoch, come here. And we can't throw Enoch out completely because the Bible says, as it was written in the book of Enoch, it says over there in Jude. So there was at one time a book of Enoch that was true uh, because the Bible cites it. As it was written in the book of Enoch, it says over there in Jude. So I want to make sure what I do is follow the scriptures. I mean, a guy told me one time, he says, Brother Breaker, you ought to read the book of Jasher. I said, what's the book of Jasher, or others pronounce it Hasher? And I said, uh, oh yeah, I remember. Is it in Samuel or Kings or one of those books? Uh, it talks about as it is written in the book of Hasher or Jasher. And uh, they said, yeah, yeah, it's mentioned in the Bible. Just like the book of Enoch is mentioned in the Bible extra canonical books. Now I try to stay away from books that aren't in the Bible. Amen. I take the Bible, the canon of the Word of God, as the final authority. I can't find the book of Jasher, so I'm busy trying to go through the phone of my Bible to see if I can maybe find it. Not really seeing it in the Old Testament. Maybe it's in the new one. Um no, I'm not really seeing it there. Okay, maybe I'm just missing it. Here, let me go to the J's here. Okay, see, there's James Jeremiah. Jasher should be right between those two, but I'm, I'm just not really seeing it. I know I'm right, because I'm following the Scripture. I'm following what the Bible says, and that's all that matters to me. And it's quite interesting that Abraham, there's a star connected with him. I think that's interesting. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> Don't want to go to the, the book of Jubilees, or was it? Yeah, I think it was the book of Jubilees or other things. But it talks about how when Abraham was born, there was a star. So people claim today to be Bible believers, yet they don't even follow the Bible. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And Paul in his writings makes it sound like we can know within nine months of when Jesus comes. Without a doubt. And you go way back here to Daniel. And you go over here to Revelation, and there's all these numbers listed that it almost makes it sound like if we knew what we are doing, and I've yet to find anybody that does, we could take these numbers and stick them in and, and figure out when Jesus is coming at the rapture. So is it possible to know today, the day or the hour? It sounds like there's a great possibility. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Oh yeah, but we can never see the day approaching because no man can know the day or hour, right? You know, maybe it's possible that we can know the day or hour. So I hope that answers the question. Many say that no man knoweth the day or hour. Why? Well, I do not concur. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. <laughs> I just need the scriptures. All I want to do is follow what the Bible says. Many years ago, there was in America what they called the Jesus Freaks. A bunch of long-haired hippies, many of them smoked pot, lived out in communal areas. And they said, man, we love reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, man. We love Jesus, man. And they were a bunch of glorified hippies that claimed religion. But were they saved? No, 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 no. A thousand times no. All they were doing was following the teachings of Jesus Christ. All they were doing was following the teachings of Jesus Christ. Really? Is this really the truth? Did they follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, or did they follow the teachings of the New Age, Hinduism? All they were doing was following the teachings of Jesus Christ. When I was younger, 
I thought repentance meant quit sinning. And so as a young child, about 13 years old, I got what's called chick tracks, and I would read those every night of my life. And I would read those, and I'd get to the end of those tracks, and it'd say, now repent and do this to be saved. And I thought, well, i got to quit sinning to get saved. So all my life I was trying to quit sinning until I was 18 years old when I heard the gospel for the very first time. You say, well, chick tracks present the gospel. Yeah, they do a little bit. But let's just put it this way. I didn't understand the gospel. I got a lot of good information from those tracks, but I didn't get saved. Because I thought that the word repent meant you had to quit sinning. So I was trying to quit sinning in order to get saved. He's got a mark, this Antichrist. If you take his mark, when Jesus returns, the Bible says he's going to cast you straight into hell because you took the mark of the Antichrist. Unless, possibly, you have the mark in your hand and you see Jesus coming back and you chop your right hand off real quick. You know, I've always wondered in the millennium if there won't be a bunch of one-handed people. Because Jesus said way back here, if the right hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better to enter into life maimed than to go to hell. So maybe there'll be some people that say, Oh, hi Jesus, good to see you. <laughs> it, it sounds like it as you read the Bible. Now the next time that these blood red tetrad moon showed up was in 1948. Any idea what happened in 1948? Oh yeah, that's when Israel became a nation. Because in 1947, the nation of Israel became a nation again. The next time that these blood red tetrad moon showed up was in 1948. Any idea what happened in 1948? Oh, yeah! That's when Israel became a nation. 1947. I had a video I watched, some guy attacking Robert Breaker and says, That guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, Israel didn't form until 1948. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And he said, Look it up. Look on the internet. Find out for yourself. So I said, uh, Well, I have done that, but I'll do it again because you said so. <laughs> so I looked it up and, and I found. Uh, website after website after website after website after website uh, website after website after website after website after website that says the United Nations voted in 1947 in November to give Palestine to the Jews. So when I say that Israel became a nation in 1947, I mean they were declared by vote of the UN to be a nation. And that's what I meant. That I am not a date setter. Man, I'm getting goosebumps. This is good. You're going to like this. You know what I believe? I believe the Apostle Paul was the first date setter. That I am not a date setter. Fifty-four A.D. would be the next jubilee. I think Paul, in the back of his mind, says, "You know what I think? I think that's when the rapture is going to be." And I think Paul thought in his head, "You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to Israel. I'm going to stand right in the middle of the temple of the Sanhedrin. I'm going to do what Stephen did. I'm going to preach to them, and I'm going to be raptured right in front of their eyes, and they're going to go, oh, it's true." What Paul said was true, Jesus is the Messiah. <laughs> That's the only thing that would explain why Paul would tell the Holy Spirit, no, no, I'm going to go back to that feast. I'm going to do what I want to do. That I am not a date setter. <laughs> and that's what my whole ministry is, is going to the Bible and say, what does the Bible say about it? And when they go to the Romans road, they always go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, and that's where they end up. And they use that verse and they say, well, call means with the mouth, so if you'll just call with your mouth, then you'll be saved. Let's read the context of Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> because... 
I don't want to deceive people into thinking they're saved when they're not. Look at verse verse 9. And shalt believe in thy heart. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It's not just repeating something with the mouth. It's whether or not you trust from the heart. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I just love the Word of God and just want to preach it. Amen. You do. Others will say, yeah, but two times it says the mouth. Well, what is it talking about with the mouth? Confession. When you're saved, you confess. You say, hey, I'm saved. You don't confess to get saved. That sounds like a Catholic doctrine. You don't confess to get saved. That sounds like a Catholic doctrine. I have, because I'm a Bible believer and I believe the scripture is. Yeah, but Romans 10, 13. Oh, we're going to get to that. And you know, the word call is not the word ask. A lot of people read Romans 10, 13 and say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means whosoever asks God to save him will be saved. Ask and call are two completely different words and they don't have the same meaning. The whole world is watching these videos that we make and we need to make sure that we do things correctly according to the scriptures so no one can say anything against us. So I'm not going to allow men to trick me into getting into a debate with them. And so we both can get in the flesh and fight back and forth. I will not allow that. No, I know too much Bible. I know too much scripture and I just want to follow that. No, I know too much Bible. I know too much scripture and I just want to follow that. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. 